Hi guys, Dave Wilson here again and today I'm going to help you out with annealing because it's an absolutely vital skill but a lot of people find it quite confusing uh, difficult to get it just right so I'm going to show you some quick easy tricks, tips and techniques to get it just spot on and get your metal nice and soft so follow me Firstly, we aren't talking about steel here, we're talking about non-ferrous metals such as copper, silver and gold used for jewellery making. The metal is made up of microscopic crystals and as you work it by hammering, texturing, embossing, especially running it through a rolling mill or pulling it through a draw plate, you're compressing the metal and crushing the structure of those tiny crystals. This makes the metal hard and brittle as the crystals can't move. This is a piece of sterling silver and it's been through the rolling mill about eight times but without being annealed. And you can see when I try to bend it, it cracks and it splinters almost like wood. You can see here how it breaks apart in layers as the crystal structure has been flattened. Imagine trying to wind this into a coil for making jump rings, it, it just wouldn't work. This is unusable and it needs to be remelted. This larger piece has been annealed several times in between each groove on the rolling mill so it doesn't splinter or crack but even so just with the last few passes through the mill it's gone hard again. It's very tough to bend and you can see how springy it is as well. The metal's perfectly fine but it's just too hard to use and if I continue to roll it then it will crack and splinter just like the other piece you saw. So this is why we need to anneal it. This is our bar of sterling silver. So to anneal it the method is to heat the piece up to cherry red, let it cool down in the earth for a few seconds to black heat and then quench in water. The mistake most people make is to overheat it too much and especially with gold alloys, overheating can make them even more brittle than they started off with. So the best advice I can give you is always anneal in the dark. Use a big soft flame, we're not trying to melt it and we don't want fire scale from overheating it. Start to warm the piece all over, nice and gentle. I hope you can see this on the camera, you're looking for a deep cherry red colour just as the metal starts to glow. Keep the flame moving and ensure the whole piece is glowing a deep red. Don't overheat any one spot. This is another reason for working in the dirt as you can clearly see when it's hot and cold. As soon as the whole piece has just started to glow cherry red, turn off the heat. Uh, I'll pop the light back on here. Notice the deep cherry colour can't be seen in bright daylight. Um, this is the reason many people overheat it. If it was glowing red in bright daylight then it would be way too hot. Let the metal air cool for just a few seconds to what's called black heat. The metal isn't glowing anymore even with the light off. It's black but it's still very very hot and this is what we call black heat. So use a pair of metal tongs, pick it up and quench in water. This is just regular room temperature tap water. If you want to pittle it, you can, but only after you've quenched it. If we compare it now to how it was before, you can see the springiness has gone, it's much easier to bend, and I can now continue rolling it without any fear of it cracking or becoming brittle. If I'm reducing burrs through the rolling mill, I usually anneal the metal after every groove. So three or four passes and once the rollers are down and touching I anneal it and then move on to the next groove. Likewise if I'm rolling or hammering a texture I will then anneal it before bending it into its final shape. Now that's great but what happens if you don't have a dark area where you can control the light? Well here's a few tricks for working under daylight. Flux. If you have borax you can paint the flux along the piece and then heat it. As soon as the borax turns glassy, like this, remove the heat immediately. Again, allow it to air cool for a few seconds to black heat, then quench in water as before. Again, 
pickle it if you want to remove the flux but only after quenching this by the way is just a safety tip don't put hot metal directly into acid because it can splash and it creates hot fumes so it's just a safety thing uh, another trick is the sharpie trick uh, clean your metal and make a line all along its length with a sharpie marker as you slowly heat the piece the line will eventually just disappear as soon as it does remove the heat again leave it for a few seconds to cool and then quench it just as before personally i don't think these methods are quite as accurate but they might help you out the standard annealing technique works for most silver and gold alloys but some people say that red gold or rose gold should be quenched immediately don't air cool it and some people suggest that white gold with high nickel content should be air cooled quickly but not quenched in water so if you're working with those metals then perhaps try those tips lastly if you're working with large pieces or big coils of wire then consider an annealing pan this is a thick metal dish filled with pumice that's volcanic rock and it allows you to get the flame all around the piece and heat it evenly quite often they rotate too so the very handy things so I hope you found that useful. I've been Dave Wilson. Thanks for watching and I'll see you real soon on the next video. Bye for now.